I've got to start today's video with an alert because the day this goes live is pretty much the last day of the XP boost. And it's currently Warlords of Draenor time walking. And if you use those both to your advantage, between level 60 and 70, you're gonna be getting a level like every 15 minutes. It will be a total breeze. So now that you're alerted and you can do any last minute leveling, let's hop into the news. This patch cycle is damn fast. 10.15 is about to release and 10.17 is already on the PTR. Ish. It's on their content distribution network, it's currently encrypted, so we don't know what it's going to contain, but the roadmap does say story and quests, holiday refresh, and content and systems updates. Of course, by holiday refresh, they likely are referring to the likes of the new Brewfest uh, rewards. We've seen like a new back piece that's quite nice. There's a new Halloween themed dragon riding cosmetic. Of course, I'd be holding out to see some actual new content for those holidays. Then for story and quests, I think it's damn obvious. With patch 10.2 likely taking us to the Emerald Dream, Blizzard will need to set up both that and of course the resolution of the Farak storyline. Where's Farak? What's going on? I've got to assume that Farak will go out with a bang, that he'll distract us, and perhaps that Varanoth will then use that to, uh, I suppose, just do something devious. Now, if I was to get all hopium on you, I would totally say what I'd want is a Farak one-boss raid and an archaeology revamp, which totally would fit into content and systems. Now, Ian did tease to me a while back that, uh, you know, an archaeology revamp pretty much is something that is on the cards. Of course, he wasn't, like, very firmly committing to a time, a date, or a patch but I did get the impression it's something they want to do and perhaps are working on. Now that said, one thing that we did learn is that the Rogue rework is actually underway, but it's not going to be there for 10.15. Instead, maybe 10.17 or 10.2. That would certainly let it, uh, if it was before the new season, it would be good if that could just live for like a few weeks, get some tuning before season three starts. But that's actually not the end of the terrific news. First though, if you want to support what we are doing, check out the Patreon. We've got a new month of loot on there, which is pretty damn sick. Uh, plenty of new podcasts. The Rogue One just went up, diving into the lore of that class, some of the key events, and I'm pretty sure the boys are going to be recording the uh, Unsolved Mysteries of Azeroth Part 2 also uh, this week. So there's a lot going on there between the early access content, podcasts, uh, loot, and uh, quite a lot more soon. So if you want to support what we're doing, you can check out the Patreon at that link down below. With that said, let's talk about the new pinging system in 10.17. And this is massive. I've wanted this in WoW for a long, long, long time. It's like being in my wish list. So, player communications scuff WoW, right? Don't they? It's just like that. The devs know that, and they've got a fix coming with pinging. So Morgan Day said in an interview that if you've played the likes of League of Legends, Apex, Dota, you'll pretty much recognize what they're doing with pings. And he pretty much said that, yeah, number one, it's an accessibility thing. Obviously not everybody's able to use voice chat, but the other side of it is, well, if you just make the communication tools better in the game, people will be more able to play the game. Now, there's a few ways to do pings, right? Sometimes you hit a button in your keyboard and then hit like a number button to do a call out or something like that. Uh, many, though, consider Apex Legends to have the best pings. Uh, so much so that actually Electronic Arts opened up their patents for their ping system for other developers to use freely, which was a surprisingly non-dick move. Anyway, they kind of work like this. If you middle mouse click, then it will do a context sensitive ping that other people in your team can see. I think it defaults to like a go here, but if you press it on an enemy, then it will do like, hey, there's an enemy over there as a ping. If you hold your mouse wheel down, then you basically get a ping wheel so you can choose different options. And that's kind of funny because uh, players for a while have been doing something like that with the add-on Opi for setting down ground markers. And I suppose that does mean if you watched uh, my Dragonflight UI video, then hey, props to you because you can do that. Anyway, that's just one way to do pings. There are others, and I think with World of Warcraft being an MMO, they'll probably do something vaguely similar, right? Like the idea of being able to ping an enemy, to highlight it to your team, perhaps, or to mark a location where people can go, just in a very quick, convenient fashion with a pinging system. I think that'll be absolutely fantastic for teams, it'll be amazing for bugs, and it will slowly make the World of Warcraft player base just better and more aware. So I think it's an absolute win, and that they're doing this in 10.17 just is even more proof of the continuous improvement methodology the Blizzard have had throughout this. They've not been holding back big new features for the next expansion. It's like if they get a new cool thing, they're goddamn shipping it. I love that. 
Speaking of which, big visual improvements to the old world, and these are really nice. Uh, they just look absurdly better in patch 10.1.5 because Blizzard have redone how lighting and skyboxes work. So previously, right, the distance would fade away into this horrific looking gray lump, and it just kind of ruined the view. I mean, do you remember what it's like when you're up at Hyja looking at the rest of Kalimdor? It looks whack. Well, look at this. This is so much nicer. Uh, yeah, basically, from what I can tell, they've taken some of the improvements that they made for the Dragonflight zones and they've just backported them to the old world, and that just leaves the continents looking so much better. Of course, this will have a nice impact on leveling, because in 10.1.5 you'll be getting your flying automatically at level 30, but I think more clearly the impetus for this is the Kalimdor Grand Prix Dragon Riding Race event. Blizzard are basically gearing up to getting dragon riding everywhere in the game, and it seems they're testing that with this Grand Prix event. So, what that basically means is, dragon riding, it works in the old continents, and to, I think, fit that level of verticality and speed, they've now updated how those zones actually look and feel because of these changes uh, to, I guess, like the fog rules, and it just looks immensely better. Just the kind of thing we want to see. Next then, good news. Ian confirmed the Trader's Tender is not going to be sold separately. Phew. Right, those datamined assets, they are indeed for promotions and bundles. Things like the extra 200 a month in the summer and some other future things like expansion collector's editions. Ian said in an interview that they like the idea of a collector's edition having some Trader's Tender because it means that somebody can get a cosmetic that they want, which of course might not be the case for the collector's edition cosmetics. So, fair play with that, I guess. I'm, yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay with that. I think that some more Trader's Tender is basically fine if it is a bonus for like a bundle or something, and importantly, if it's limited, right? Rather than a situation where people can swipe to get everything on the store any given month. I think the negative incentives are way stronger if you can just uncapped buy Tender, because then every single month Blizzard will just have this little thing of, oh yeah, we could put two more amounts in the thing and we'll earn more money. And yes, there's a tiny bit of that incentive that does exist if Trader's Thunder is going to be in big bundles, but it's nowhere near as bad if it could be purchased as if it could be purchased on demand. Next, the Mega Dungeon. So after a gigantic buff that actually did make it pretty damn hard in a real good way, Actually, Dawn of the Infinite has seen progressive nerfs over the last week. Now, this did come after a lot of praise for its difficulty, but it's worth being mindful that there is potentially bias towards it being like more hardcore sets of players giving that feedback, right, on the PTR. Now, per the interviews, they still are targeting tuning that is higher than most Mega Dungeons. And a part of that, of course, is because it's coming out mid-season. So in terms of gear, if it, you know, if it started and it was barely competitive with, uh, with Aberus, that would be a bit shit. Now, the gear itself will be Hero 4 out of 5, which means it will drop at item level 437. That is firmly heroic gear, and that does mean that for people who've completed normal and want some further gear, or maybe are already geared, and want to get some of those unique powerful items and the achievements, well, it's pretty well positioned for you. If you've got a brand new character that's like eye level 400, like say my new paladin, you'll definitely want to get some gear before you head in there. As an example, Immortal is a really good achievement to add some more gameplay spice into this, where if you get a run where nobody dies, you get a really sick gear set that is actually unlocked account wide, right? So you only need to do it once and you know, you'll get the cloth version, the leather version and so on. Now, as a gear source, this is actually super competitive. I mean, it's pretty much raid item level. Level, heroic raid item level, the end of run mythic plus gear that you get is 428. Now, of course, M plus is infinitely replayable, which is why that gear is not as good. Uh, but you know, this being on its weekly lockout, giving you a 437, that is really powerful. Now, all that being said, Ian did say that with the heroic version of this unlocking in 10.17, they basically feel a bit more happy to err on the side of difficulty with the launch shooting, because at the end of the day, the heroic dungeon version will be coming out pretty damn soon anyway. Okay, it's entangling and bursting week. What does that mean? That does mean it's time to do a big push. That's the kind of thing you like doing in M+. Uh, so yeah, it's a really, really good week in terms of difficulty. Now, the other thing is huge nerfs, and I'll go over them pretty quick. Basically, Blizzard have been quiet on shooting for a few weeks. I saw a lot of kickback from the M+, uh, players, but now what we've seen basically is a lot of 10 to 25% nerfs to Nathalrus mechanics, 25% nerfs to a few Naltharian's Lair things, and more changes a 
along those lines for most of the dungeons, with Mythalaris being the main focus. And from what I can tell, this is just Blizzard targeting the very specific difficulty spikes that happen when you are scaling up to big, big high numbers with, you know, a high keystone level, and you also have Tyrannical Weak. And that just means that all these, you know, layers of scaling are applying to boss abilities, which mean that they absolutely thwack people. Okay, a final bit of news roundup, and I've got some tips for you. 1015's Catalyst uh, is pretty sweet, because it's going to allow us to transform Season 1 Dragonflight and Shadowlands Season 3 and 4 gear into tier for free, right? I've got no idea why this is shipping in 1015 instead of, you know, 10.1, uh, but hey, here it is anyway. That being said, I've got a really key tip for you. Here's what you want to do. You want to get the Primal Storm gear that you get from the Forbidden Reach, but not the version that you upgrade with the upgrade item, okay? So get that Primal Storm gear and then turn it into tier using the Catalyst. Once you've done that, take the upgrade items that you can get on the Forbidden Reach, and then apply those upgrade items to your tier gear. If you do that, you'll actually unlock both tier tints with uh, just want the one piece, uh, which is really handy. As for the Shadowlands stuff, look, I know we don't want to go back to the Shadowlands, but to be real with you, a lot of the Sepulchre sets are really nice. I mean, come on, just look at Sepulchre Rogue. It is sick. So with those, like, you can't just go, like, do Sepulchre yourself. I believe, though, also the Sandworn Relic, or whatever it was called, uh, that stuff in Zareth Mortis, I, I think that can be transferred over into tier with the Creation Catalyst, which uh, is still where it is in Zareth Mortis. Overall, then, pretty damn good. And speaking of the Catalyst, the raid will actually drop fewer tier tokens now because, let's face it, they're pretty much useless for almost all of us because the Catalyst exists now. Then finally, those of you, this is such a big problem, those of you with too much profession knowledge, you can trade it in for some extra artisan's metal. Ah, I sure wish I had too much profession knowledge. I feel firmly behind where it's probably not possible for me to catch up. But I suppose I kind of just use my characters as little alchemy mules. But anyway, there you have it. If you want to watch some more content, we've got early access stuff up on our Patreon now. By the way, here is the pin for this month. A um, bit of like a broken uh, Narsil vibe going on, which I really loved it when the, when, I, well, when the art team showed me this and when it arrived in. So these are big hype. Uh, there's also all the podcasts there. The rest of the loot. Overall, it's a real good time, and uh, frankly, it is, I, I, I think, Patreon and all that is like my number one uh, plan, and there's cool things coming soon, uh, because ultimately, I would rather things are successful because people enjoy what we're doing, rather than, you know, having to tap dance around the place on an advertisement-driven platform like YouTube, which probably makes uh, both me and you pretty damn tired. It certainly makes me tired. Anyway, that's it. Have a brilliant day. The new patch comes out tomorrow or the day after, depending on what day you watch this. I hope you enjoy it. I'm actually, I'm feeling pretty damn good.